Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Mac shows up at the boathouse just as Kobe is removing James from the water. Is James okay? Mac asks. Cody saved me, declares James. Mac claims he understands that. Felicia, Maxie, and Sasha show up. Telling her kid he can't keep running away, Maxie gives him a hug. She urges her mother to inform Spinelli VSSS that James is okay. James says that if he had been able to continue receiving instruction from Cody, he would not have fled. Maxie says he can attend classes but that he will be suspended for a fortnight. Why does she alter her mind, James wonders. Maxie claims that by prohibiting him from visiting Cody, she erred. It wasn't your mom's mistake, it was mine, Mac interjects. Mac confides in James that he took his anger and damaged sentiments on Cody, but in the process that only made James feel worse. James wants to know why his grandfather was upset with Cody. James is informed by Mac that Cody is his son. Does that make Cody my uncle? queries James. James turns to face Cody, who responds that it does. James believes this to be cool. In response to his question, his mother confirms that Cody is her brother. James asks Mac what enraged him about this. Mac says that even though he only recently learned that Cody is his son, it reminded him that family members always love and forgive one another, even when they are at odds. As he welcomes Cody to the family, James gives him a hug. Giving Mac a hug, Maxie expresses her pride in him. Thanking Cody, Maxie and the boy head out to get James dressed in dry clothes. Mac informs Cody that his appreciation for him is limitless. Joking that he sounds like his son Spinelli, Cody makes jokes. Cody claims to have a father, while Mac claims to have a son. They give hugs. Cody goes back to the stables with Sasha. Is he okay? She wonders. Cody is always wondering what would happen if he didn't make it to the boathouse in time. Sasha claims that once she arrived and he saved James, a lovely occurrence transpired. He declares, I have a father. You got a whole family, she remarks. How does it feel? She asks. He acknowledges that it's unlike anything he's experienced before. Cody and Sasha share a passionate kiss. When they return to the boathouse docks, Felicia asks Mac how he is doing. He affirms that she was correct. She chuckles, knowing she's always right. They share a kiss. As per Laura's invitation, Anna shows up at her workplace. Laura informs that they will be meeting with the head of the new WSB station. Laura is aware that she just put him in jail. Anna informs them that Brennan has been cleared and is once more a fully accredited agent, and that the WSB is unlikely to provide them with any further information on this. When Brennan shows there, Laura tells him that she set up this get-together since they all share similar interests. Laura gets right to the point, believing that because Brennan and Anna have similar backgrounds and skill sets, they have a special chance here. Her wish is for them to find Valentin Cassidyne. Anna claims that she is unable to contact the FBI, who are searching for him. Brennan points out that the WSB makes an effort to stay out of the FBI's cases. Laura worries since Valentin is the grandfather of her grandchild. She is reassured by Anna that Valentin would never endanger Charlotte. A phone call interrupts them. Laura answers it. She excuses herself for a moment because something has come up. By herself, Anna charges Brennan with keeping Valentin hidden. He claims she doesn't have any evidence and that she could always tell Laura that she assisted Valentin in getting away. When Laura gets back, she questions what she missed. According to Brennan, they were discussing jurisdictions. He claims he has to leave. But since Laura's reputation precedes her, he'd want to meet her and hear some of her stories. After Brennan leaves, Laura observes that Brennan is charming, which worries her. She questions whether Brennan already knows Valentin's location. Laura is astonished to receive a call out of the blue. She promises to arrive immediately. Is everything okay? asks Anna. Laura says, that's Lulu. As Christina is being discharged from the hospital, 
Alexis assists her in getting dressed. Alexis gives Christina a key to her apartment to give to Blaze so that she can visit, but Christina realizes she's not in a good mood and that leaving means her life starts over again without her kid. Thanking her mother, Christina remarks that it's not necessary. According to Christina, Allison was forced to go on tour because she wasn't feeling well and couldn't possibly help anyone. According to Alexis, she's quite significant to her. Dr. Navarro walks in bearing Christina's discharge exam findings. She claims that so far, her ovaries and uterus appear healthy, and she should fully recover. She doesn't see any obstacle in the way of her future parenthood. After Dr. Navarro departs, Christina questions what is meant by full recovery. It indicates her body will mend, according to Alexis. What about the rest of me? inquires Christina. That will take time, according to Alexis, but her heart will also grow healthier. Stella and Curtis converse in a conference room. He expresses gratitude to Stella for guiding them through the funeral planning papers for a newborn. In whatever way that she can, Stella wants to support TJ and Molly. Stella is largely in control of it. All that's left to complete is the birth certificate. When TJ gets there, he discovers Molly hasn't arrived yet. Molly can catch up, he says, so they should get going. TJ claims they've never decided on a name, but Stella clarifies that they need one for the birth certificate. Stella proposes they stick with Lansing Ashford for the time being. Molly promptly shows there and apologizes for being late for her boss's meeting. After bringing Molly up to date, TJ believes they still need to give their child a name. Stella suggests that they go by their last names for now and choose a name later. She adds that her sister Irene always had a way of being the rock in the storm and that even in the midst of the most trying catastrophes, life continues on. She adds that holding on to each other is crucial for couples going through something this serious. Curtis and Stella walk away to give them some alone time. Molly's tardiness is bothering TJ. Molly informs TJ that she's been attempting to forget by immersing herself in her work, but nothing seems to help. She claims that even after confronting Ava, who refused to admit their kid was still missing. While in Christina's room, Alexis wished Molly was present on this day. If Christina has seen Molly recently, she queries. Christina had, and she shares with her the details of their visit and how she described her interactions with Ava. She claims that Molly was incensed and shocked, particularly after viewing the pictures. When Scott first meets Clement in a warehouse, he informs him that Sonny, who most likely wants him dead, is the reason he is here to help. As they ride to Spoon Island, he promises Clement that he would fetch them some munchies. Kate's informs Ava at her gallery that they may embellish the story in those pictures whatever they choose, particularly because the victim is a government witness. She reminds him that the window was only penetrated by one person. In the images, she is shown defending herself against Christina's attacks, despite Kate's advice to listen to him. Additionally, Christina's anger is evident from the look on her face. According to him, Christina attempted to kill Ava and was involved in a criminal conspiracy to keep her father safe when she went there that day. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.